Good morning, everybody, wherever you are. This is Ray Williams, and we are going to have a very informative meeting today on what's happening with our exchange platform, what's happening with you, what's happening in the industry, what some of our opinions are. And of course, we're going to have some excellent new products to show you from DJ Studio, D Reality, and Music Lab. All right, we're going to jump right in because we have a lot to cover. I'm going to try to get through most of it quickly so we can make time for some Q&A at the end and also have the vendor presentations go off without much of a, of a pressure on sort of time. All right, so we always like to start by paying homage to IMSTA. IMSTA is a community organization. This is the trade organization for the software industry. And it is a, it's not profit. It certainly does not make a lot of money. In fact, it loses money every year. So whatever you could contribute to IMSTA, if they ever ask, do it because IMSTA is the only organization that's out here trying to, you know, preach about piracy, trying to engage with young people to get them to purchase software instead of downloading it. Right. It's very important. All right, as I mentioned before, we have three vendors who are going to be participating today, showing their products. These are all very, very cool products, starting with DJ Studio, then Dear Reality, and a Music Lab. Okay, so those will be after my presentation in about 30 minutes from now. I expect that to be good. Let's jump right into the numbers. Not a whole lot has, has changed We from the last time we met. Um, we're still seeing a very positive outlook for 2024. Now, in our industry, we got a lot of negativity. There, there's been a big report from Music and Trades, which shows that the industry is kind of on a kind of decline, um, and they have real numbers to support that. Certainly, if you go around and speak to a lot of resellers, they give you the same information. I just came back from the NAM Next conference in Nashville and uh, spoke to several dealers, many dealers across the United States uh, and some in Europe. And most people were saying uh, that things are down, negative. And well, we have a different story um, and we don't mean to be bragging or anything, but for some reason, our sector is still growing. If it's not growing for you, you need to connect with us and we can figure out a way to get you to be part of this growth. But we're very confident that we could predict that the end of 2024 based on where we are now and what we know what happens in the second half of the year uh it's a it's a virtual certainty that we're going to have uh, uh maybe 10 or 15 percent growth in our business this year in the software music technology space that we that we administer and all of you guys are of course a part of it so some of the numbers you know are kind of spectacular we're trying to like you know, keep them sane here, you know, 12%, you know, it's the last 12 months versus the previous 12 months. Uh, and we've had, you know, f over 50 uh, new resellers join the, the platform. Now, the quarterly tracking is the story of this year. Um, we've seen a record Q2. So this Q2, we always try to compare to the COVID Q2, because the COVID Q2 before this year, before 2024, was the largest second quarter business we have ever seen. Uh, in 2024, this Q2 was actually higher than the COVID Q2 2020. So this is, again, great news. And this, of course, is what's propelling the, you know, the increased forecast that we're seeing right now. This is the best first half we've ever had including, of course, uh, 2020. There, there is a promotional element to it. So when you dig into the numbers, there are a lot of promotions that uh, vendors threw, in particular in the second quarter, and have been a lot of success in terms of reselling those. So the resellers who have jumped on those promotions have reaped a lot of the benefits. So we've seen also on a reseller side, quite a few resellers are up. 
Uh, so we're going to have, I'm pretty sure to say it's a safe bet, looking back historically on all the performances, the first half versus the second half, there's almost no way we're not going to have a great 2024. Now, we also like to track this because we, you know, as a, um, a, a company that's providing a service, we, we, we like to provide this service on a global level. We like as many people as possible to participate and enjoy the service. And, and as a result, we've been trying for, for, for many years to reduce our dependence on the top three resellers on exchange. And we've had this, of course, these discussions for years. We're happy to report that for the first time, this segment is comfortably below 40 percent it's not exactly where it needs to be but still compared to where it used to be a few years ago it was 73 percent so what that means is the the service is getting wider we're servicing more dealers we're servicing more regions at the same time the top three resellers their business is growing so there's no it's not like they're declining uh, our whole business is growing but we're growing with additional new dealers which is a very very healthy and happy outcome for us. Now, this is an interesting story. Just as a FYI, for the first time in five years, somebody's exited the top three and somebody else has obviously entered. Um, the key to these top three, which is very strong, very dominant dealers, especially in the area of, of promotions, is they have very good automation, which means when you come to their website, you buy something, you get the, you get the product immediately. They have a good speed to market, meaning when product comes out, if it comes out on a Tuesday at 10 o'clock, it's on their website on a Tuesday at 10 o'clock, okay? And not like the two or three weeks later. So speed to market, it's very, very important. And they have a complete assortment kind of mentality of an Amazon. Rather, rather than curate products, they take them all throw them up there, let the customer curate. We've been preaching this for a very long time. We can see a lot of data. You should trust us. Do not, under any circumstances, curate products that you don't have to pay for. You don't have to inventory, you don't have to store. There is absolutely no point in you curating them. Let the customers curate it. I don't know if I, I probably should put this on a plaque and send it to everybody. We're begging you. Stop curating. This is not guitars, it's not amps, it's not drum sets. Stop it. Just the products are available, put them on this, on your website. Let the customers curate. The top 10 resellers, very strong again. Their market share also is dipped. We would like to have them well below 50%, meaning that our marketplace should not be reliant on 10 people to this kind of a degree. Uh, of course, we we're happy that it's down from where it used to be, but we still have work to do. And that means a lot of work, not only with helping these people maintain their business and growing it, but getting new people in and expanding the market globally. Most of the expansion, of course, are in the smaller retailers, not only out, outside of the North American area, but around the world. Um, despite that, because of the the year that we're going to have and because of their share of the business and the projections, they are projected as a group to grow their business almost 20% this year. Very, very good year shaping up for the top 10 resellers on exchange. And that means they're taking a disproportionate amount of the 12, 11% we think we're going to have this year. And again, we had some turnover in the top 10 two companies entered, which means two companies or two resellers exited. Now, this is a group, of course, that we've put a lot of work in. We have actually added a staff member here to just take care of these resellers. And this, again, they're going to grow. Of course, they're growing from a smaller pot, but still going to grow 15% of their previous year's sale based on, again, on the projections that we have. We're very happy that they finally starting to move this graph and the sort of plateauing that we saw from 2020 illustrates the strength of the top 10 dealers. They're like a giant vacuum cleaner, okay? They just go around 
sucking up every single sale. And if you want to compete, you have to also get a nice big vacuum cleaner in your business. Okay? Can't beat them, join them. All right? You can see that they can stifle hundreds and hundreds of dealers' share of growth if they really turn on the engines. All right? So we're seeing now, of course, in 2024, starting to move here in the emerging areas. Um, we're going to have, you know, quite a bit of transactions. It wasn't too long ago, Exchange hadn't had 100,000 transactions. So we'll have 130,000 or so transactions in this group, this, this emerging group, which is the group outside of the top 10. I'm very happy about that. But keep that going. And a market share inched up, just, just inched up uh, from 41 to 43%. Now, this is the regional breakdown of the numbers, and this is a story of, again, spreading the wealth, spreading the, the, the love, if you want, spreading the opportunity. We would like the platform to not just be a United States thing, although we love the United States. I spent a lot of time there. We have an office there, but it has to be something that everybody could enjoy. We like the regions to have their customers who are local purchase the products from them. Uh, I think that's the healthiest way, best for the customers, best for the reseller, best for our industry. But it's pretty stable from 2023 to 2024, except really for Germany. Germany, I think this year also is going to grow. So I think Germany is poised to, uh, I don't know if you want to call it reclaim or their spot, but it's a very strong performance so far this year from that territory okay and it comes at the expense of other territories but again largely if you look at the pie chart it's it's pretty stable the united states market which is still growing but not growing by much is where most of the market shares is, is coming from in terms of in terms of transactions so it means that our platform is expanding actually dramatically higher outside of the United States than it is in the United States. Okay. And the United States always been a benchmark. Go all the way back to 2018 over here. You'll see it was 69% of our business and not that long ago. Now it's 46%, uh, but it's much higher than it was, of course, in 2018. Uh, this is just another way of looking at it. Uh, you can see it's very stable, but there's definitely a trend here. And the trend line is that the emerging areas are growing and some of the regions, I think Japan might be, you know, giving up a little bit. And there's England, of course, you know, United Kingdom, which is quite strong. If you can look back a few years ago, it's a much bigger business. Uh, and of course, Germany is the, is the talk of this, this, this meeting right here. Now, when we go into the emerging is basically going into this pink area here. If we delve in this pink area, we get this breakdown. Okay. So inside of this emerging group, the talk really for the last two years has been the remarkable rise of the Korean region in terms of their sales. Their sales have gone up. A lot of Korean customers are buying local. I think there, there is really no reason for any Korean customer to buy from anybody outside of Korea. The, the Koreans have have established themselves as a, a market that that is, is very rich in terms of support, knowledge, access, uh, assortment, training, marketing for music software and technology products. And I think this is, you know, uh, rewarded by the uh, Korean consumer who who sees absolutely no reason to go to a, another website somewhere else. Not that many Koreans don't do that, but we're seeing more and more and more Koreans just buying local. And that's really the, the you know, what we're, what we're trying to do in a nutshell. We're trying to build a lot of these markets. We think it's healthy for the industry to have, you know, Indonesian people buy from Indonesian dealer, Japanese customers buy from Japanese dealers, American deal, uh, customers buy from American dealers as much as possible. Eastern Europe and France, these are areas that we, you know, we always watching France. France is a very interesting market. And we've seen, again, a big build in there. And we've seen a big build also in, in Eastern Europe, a little bit of a retreat from the Northern Europe region, actually quite a big retreat. Not sure what, what that is. And then China, stabilized China was extremely high coming out of the pandemic. And then now it's come back to earth. 
but it hasn't come back anywhere near where it was in 2019 uh, or even 2020. So, so this is a very good news story. We're building a software selling apparatus in, in, in China. And Canada, a lot of that is uh, simply uh, uh, hardware sales that are, that are pumping through that marketplace. And Southeast Asia, with you know, 670 million people, this is the market that I think you, know, you ignore at your peril. The promotional business, we like to break that down. We do not like the concept of, you know, everything on sale, everything 90% off. This is not healthy. It's not sustainable. So we've been keeping tabs on what the, what the percentage of business and exchanges that are discounted products. So we can track that, of course, we've been tracking that from the beginning. And last year was uh, 2023 was, was, was an anomaly. I think it went up to 40 some percent. It was insane. It, it was a lot. I think, I mean, I think like, we can't tell the vendors what to do. They do whatever they want to do. I think a lot of it was, you know, people trying to make their quotas and people trying to get the products out. A little bit of panic. We didn't know what the year was going to be. There were a lot of doom and gloom predictions for 2023. We ourselves gave a doom and doom prediction for 2023 back in January of 2023. So I think a lot of people were just, you know, concerned and and were proactive in terms of getting getting their products out as cheaply as possible. So it was an anomaly. This year, back to normal. This year we have, um, you know, the, the typical 30%, which is, I think, a healthier ratio. Now, what this means is seven out of 10 products. And again, for everybody watching this, Keep this in mind, seven out of 10 products historically, as you know, forget the anomaly of 2023, which is six out of 10 products. But generally speaking, seven out of 10 products that are sold on exchange is sold at regular price. That means people are buying it every single day at the normal price. They don't need discount. They just need to get it right away. They need convenience. They need, they just need convenience. I need it right now. Let me get it. It's not that much money. It's a hundred bucks. It's like, you know, you could spend that at McDonald's. This year we have, we still have a record, not as much as, as it would have been if had it been last year's figure, but we'll still have an increase in the number of promotions because we of course have to have to contend with November and Black Friday, which is, which is obviously coming. And the top three resellers, and we, you know, these are um, you know, very important resellers, but they still, they still to this day hold 53% of the entire promotion sales revenue. And that just shows you the power of the vacuum cleaner, okay? The, the, the power of their reach, the power of whatever methodologies they've been in, you know, installing their, in their companies. It is formidable, all right? They've got great reach. They've got great marketing, great outreach. They touch their customers all the time and they have deals and they ask for deals and they're aggressive. Um, and, you know, these are the results. What can we say? I mean, if you go down the list, the top 10 dealers still take 71% of the promo business. Um, We've been trying to get our emerging guys to get more and more involved. I mean, yeah, you're 29%. Everybody else is 29%. That's the highest it's ever been, actually. But I think there could be a lot, a lot more. When you get a promotion, um, tell tell the world you have a promotion. I think if you hide the promotion, if you ignore the promotion, if you hope that somebody will stumble onto your web shop and, and buy it. Um, or into your store and buy it, you'll be waiting a long time. Uh, you know, you can be waiting. The earth would have frozen over, hell would have frozen over, and you're still waiting for that customer to come, trust me. You have to tell people that you have the promotion. You have to evangelize. You have to get your big, you know, bullhorn. And we've said this before, it's, it's the easiest business model in the business you don't have to pay for anything up front. You simply have to alert your, you have to find your customers, tell them, you know, you all have customers, tell them that you have these brands. When they have a promotion, tell them that you have their promotion. 
usually have exactly the same price as everybody else. Make sure they can get it from you easily. If, if, if you're not, you know, if you're not integrated, I don't know what to tell you. You're going to be up late at night and so on. If you get the ping of a sale, you have to go on, buy the code and send it. But ideally, you need to be, you have to be integrated in order to grow and scale without, you know, without care. The top three resellers, and again, we're going to say this straight, straightforwardly. The top three resellers are, let's say they're doing 200,000 transactions every year on promotions. They can do 200 million transactions without changing anything. They can do 200 billion transactions without changing anything because they've integrated. There's nothing else to do. It's the, system's co the system just take a code from here, put it there. It's a very simple thing, computer to computer. This is the power of integration. You do it once, the benefits are huge. Okay, I know I'm preaching. Promotional sales. This is distorted because of the United Kingdom. I think some of you can guess who's behind that, um, but this is, this is growing. It's growing. It's, it's no one's fault. It's, uh, it's just ingenuity, strength, organized, relentless action from, from, you know, people that this is their business. This is their strength. The, this is coming to the expense of certain territories, of course, U USA and Japan, and of course the emerging market. So emerging customers are not safe from the bullhorn and the vacuum cleaner of some of these big dealers, okay? They're very good at what they do, and we, we, we love them, okay? We, we have no, no dog in the fight, so to speak, but we, we wanna help everybody because, again, we don't want concentration of everything on one, one dealer or one region. Amazon versus team. Now, this is nothing right now. This is David and Goliath, okay? Amazon is Goliath, Team U is David. Just has a slingshot. Now, a lot of our customers are using FBA, Amazon FBA. It works. It's good. It's a great way to sell products. Amazon gives you a lot of eyeballs. You get to pay some fees. You know, there's some costs. But TMU has a different model. They go in factory straight to the customer. So they're bypassing everybody. All right. Now, these multiple margin stages for that, that Amazon has, again, if there's no team, you, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It works. But this factory to consumer model, I'm just call it FTC, is creating something that is very difficult to beat. We're having factories sell directly to customers and the price, in some cases, you have identical products on two platforms. Some of it imported at great costs, duties, all these things, sometimes 10 times cheaper on TMU. This is something to watch. It's not an emergency. It's like having a hurricane that's, you know, a week out. You have lots of time. It's okay. You don't have to panic, but you should know what's coming. Who are these people? Well, it's it's Pinduoduo. Uh, who are these guys? Well, they're an e-commerce platform in China. They've already disrupted a lot of business in China with this factory to consumer model. TMU has been sent out to the world to expand this model. So these things are coming. If you go back to the context that we're talking about with Sam Ash, these are just forces that are outside of your control, but you should know what's happening with them. All right? Now, it brings me to the final lesson, and we've been saying this for a long time, and I know I'm, I'm lit, but three minutes over, so I'll be done in like two minutes. Our business has been driven by the supply model, okay? Manufacturers go out and make products. They dream up products that nobody has asked them to dream up, and they force them down the throat of everyone, okay? They just push them on you. They're making it just to hit some kind of quota, to fuel some kind of growth, or just because they can. Just because it's easy to do. You have the microphone, that's great, but I'm gonna add a little button, make a new SKU, or what about the 100 I have? Well, sell them off, buy another 100. This model ends up parked at the reseller, 
park to the distributor, park somewhere other than the manufacturer. The current retail environment, remember what I'm saying right now. I'm not any smarter than anybody on this on this call, but I have eyes like you. This current retail model cannot sustain this anymore. You can't go over and make a whole bunch of stuff, bring it here and force it at anybody's throat. There is no place to put it. It's over. There's no place to put any more of this stuff. All these revenge brands, all these Me Too products, game over. Now, we'll talk about a couple of things before we get our first vendor on a call. We have a new feature called upcoming price changes. Vendors have been asking for this. Now, this is very important for you resellers. When a vendor now is making a price change for a product, let's say August the 1st, this product is going up in price. You can now see all those price changes ahead of time. It allows you to either maybe buy some of those things or put it on sale. Or if you know it's going down, don't buy it or get ready for the price change. Okay, so this, this is very cool. The vendors will post the date. You'll get a notification. Of course, they should also notify you directly. And then the price change kicks in. Second thing we're going to do, we're going to roll out in the month of August, our reseller rating system. All of you, when you log in, you'll see your rating. Um, we, we've already given you the criteria for the rating system. It's region based. That means every region we start over. So you five star in this region. You could be five, you might be two star in that other region, but it's based on your own region and your your relative performance based on the other people in that region. It assists the vendors in in recognizing who is performing and who is not. And um, it's it's done. We could say that the system is done. So without any further ado, I'm going to pass the torch now to a C brand from DJ Studio, who's going to show you a product that I think is just an incredible incredible piece of technology that allows you to make set lists and work with audio with songs in ways i wish i could have done when i was when i was you know when i was a kid when i was just coming up or trying to struggle to put the set list together or just listen to music so sebrin if you're ready to go i'm going to pass it over to you my friend so i'm sebrin i'm the ceo of dj studio dj studio is a tool for making dj mixes to make a DJ mix nowadays, you roughly have three options. Option one is the oldest option, having a turntable on the left, turntable on the right, a few sliders, a few knobs. And if you want to record your uh, DJ mix, you press the big record button. And then in one hour, you hope you have a good running mix of one hour. Option two is what a lot of radio show users now do, is using a DAW, Ableton, most used, or Logic. It's a pretty steep learning curve and a DAW is actually made to produce music and not to work with produced music. So it is, it's pretty intimidating. And then uh, you have, uh, you had option three and that's MixMeister. It was an application where you could mix on a timeline. Unfortunately, the application got bought in 2007 by Numark, Numark by Denon, Denon by InMusic. And at the time, A-Music was the owner. Aaron Higgins, the creator of this little application, was gone. So I used it for the last 15 years until it stopped working on my uh, new Mac. And I decided it was time for something else. So if you look at the landscape for making a DJ mix, you see MixMeister is not supported anymore. The doors are for producers. And the rest of the software is for live performance and not for making a studio mix. So that's why we came up with option number four, a DAW specifically for DJs. So we connect to all existing DJ libraries. So if a DJ uses Serato or Virtual DJ or Recordbox, he simply tells it to our software and we connect to his library. Uh, we connect to online platforms. We're partner of Beatport, BeatSource, so you can log in with your credentials and you can play with your streaming music. We can convert your Spotify playlist into a beat source or a beat port playlist, making it more or less accessible. 
recently we partnered with SoundCloud and we're now integrating SoundCloud Go and SoundCloud DJ into DJ Studio, making it even more easy to access a large catalog of music. Uh, we help you order your playlist. We help you based on the Camelot wheel or the wheel of fifth for the musical people. And on the Camelot wheel, you can go one up or one down. That's how DJs learn how they can mix tracks and prevent off-tone mixes. We help them order the playlist. The problem with this playlist, if you want to order it harmonically on key and on BPM, there are a lot of combinations. So even with, with 15 tracks, you already have a trillion options to come up with the best possible way. Well, we created some AI and some algorithms where we help you order your tracks that you want to play. Um, we have a timeline. So uh, the, in the middle of the screen, you see a blue window and that's the transition window. And in this transition window, the magic is happening. This is where you do the crossfade or the bass swap. And this window, you can move the tracks into this window on any place you want. And that's, that's eventually where the DJ does his magic going from track A to track B. We do stem separation. So in the same window, you can separate the drums, the bass, the melody, and the vocal, and you can switch the vocal from one track to the other, or you can leave out the melody in case you have a clashing key or just too much instruments. So it's a really big uh, uh, um, lifesaver and, and tool for going from track A to track B. We do beat gridding on, based on AI, and we're able to find every beat in a track. This is Come On Eileen, Dexy's Midnight Runners, and they decided, you see all these wiggling in here, this is the, the swing or the groove, and Come On Eileen is going up from 106 to 214 in tempo. We're able to follow this tempo, so if you put a modern beat under this track, the beat will drum along with the old groove of this 80s song. And we have VST support, so if you want to add effects and you're more using your producer hat, then we're also here to help you make your DJ mix fast. So if you look at our workflow, on the left, you connect to your local library or you connect to online libraries. You select all the songs that you want to have in your mix. Then you press auto mix. We come up with the good order and you can focus on your transitions as a DJ or a radio show maker. And then you can export the result to a WAV file or an MP3 file. We can generate an Ableton project file for you. That means that everything you create in DJ Studio can be generated as an Ableton project file, not only the stems, but really the project with all automation. We can bring it to Recordbox or Serato. So if you use DJ Studio purely to make your playlist, then we can export the playlist back. We can use hot cues where we can show where you need to mix in the next incoming track as a DJ. We can export it for you to SoundCloud or MixCloud, so put it online. Or we can create a video for you with the original footage if you mixed with videos or we can generate musical animation for you. Um, if you look at the current user base, we have more than 20,000 paying users now. We have about 60% of them are professional users, and we have 40% of them are the hobbyists, the bedroom DJs and the playlist lovers. So these are the slides. Now I'll jump into the software. This is the home screen of DJ Studio. On the left, you see the different music sources that you can use. And this is an overview of the projects that you have. Update available. We're a team of 20 people and we code a lot. So we have a weekly, at least one update, most of the time, multiple updates. Let me create project. Creating a project, I told our software that I have Apple Music, mixed in key, record box, and I have a Beatport and BeatSource account. Over here, you can search the BeatSource. I have some measured tracks in here. These tracks uh, you in here. And if you like the tracks, you can select them and add them to your mix. Let me go to record box, select some more tracks. So now I've got 36 tracks in total. 
and I'll add them to my mix. We analyze the tracks if necessary, and there are three tracks that we still need to find a key for. We have an integration with Mixed in Key for people who want to use Mixed in Key. Here you see the studio timeline. Let me go to the playlist. Here you see the playlist, you see the key of the songs, and you see an assign how compatible the track is with the next track, harmonically compatible. You can drag these tracks around and make the mix order you want to have. And this is always difficult. A two can become after a one and a four, but a 10, I need a six. And this is how you can order it, but you will always end up with some tracks that won't fit. We have something called auto mix. And auto mix is based on the Camelot wheel. On the Camelot wheel, a C major and a G major, they only have one semitone difference. So it's hard to clash with only one semitone. So it's safe to go from an eight to a nine. You have on the Camelot wheel, two systems. We call it fuzzy mixing, where you go one semitone up or one semitone down, and you're always safe technically to mix without getting off, off tone. We also have mood mixing and mood mixing is a bit more complicated, but we go right ways on the Camelot wheel. Going from an eight to a 10 is going from a C major to a D major. It's what we call an energizing mix. It's giving a lot of energy to the audience when they go from a C to the D, but you have two semitones different, so there can be a clash in tones. So you need to know where you mix. We can also go from a C major to a D flat major. This is where we bring all semitones, one semitone up, so all notes. So it will absolutely clash, but if you play them directly behind each other, it's like a carnival's hit, la, 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 and then la, 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 la. So if you play these tracks behind each other, it gives a lot of energy to the crowd, and they don't know why, but this is just because you get, uh, go from the C major to the D flat major. So these are tricks that we take into account when we create the mix for you. For the transitions, we can set some presets. The DJ is the one who does the mixing. And then we have the playlist ordering in here. And let's start the algorithm. We have 15 seconds for this algorithm to come up with some mix combinations. We make a lot of mix combinations to see what would be the best order for these 36 tracks. And you see now, once I finished it, that we have a perfectly ordered mix. There was one issue that we have, and we have a solver where we can add a track, and it's only a harmonically issue that we have in here. Now that you have your tracks in the mix, you can start playing in the studio. You don't need to worry about harmonic compatibility anymore. Here is a track. Um... Do you hear my music, by the way? Yes? Okay, that's good. Um, uh... The tracks in here, you can zoom in to the, the beats if you want. The nice thing uh, we have in here, it's an, it's an editor. So I can copy a part of this music and I can paste it. It's always sounding uh, good since we know where the beats are. The transition part we have is over here. This is the blue transition window. And what you can do, you can drag this window to any place in the music and the incoming track. Let's listen. And I can place this track in the window as well. So you can drag the transition window like this. When you click the transition window, you zoom in. And in the bottom, we have transition presets. In here, you see a volume crossfade of 50%. And this is the bass that is swapping. And when I uh, listen to this, and I can drag the track over here. And you see what the DJ is doing live. I can simply play with the presets. I can leave some space out in the bass. So I'm leaving four beats out. I can go to effects. We have lots of effects in here. I can put a riser in here and let's see if this sounds. Just... 
and you see I made a good transition. If I love this transition, I can lock it. And now I can't make any changes to this transition anymore. And when you see the playlist, the tracks are locked and I'm not able to uh, drag a track in between. So the further you are in making your playlist, the more tracks uh, are locked. Let's see where is my David Guetta. Here we go. What you can also do is once you have finished this transition, you're still able to say, hey, I'd like, I'd like to mix it in earlier. I'd like to mix it in over here. And now, uh, and what you now see, you hear two vocals at the same time. And that's, that's not good. That's, that's bad. So clicking this transition, you can switch the view to stems. And now we separate the stems in here. And you see that this song over here. So now I switched off this vocal and have so, and I can also grab this vocal out of the track and put it in one of the sample lanes. We have a few sample lanes in here and now I can shorten this sample and let's say I'd like to have her coming back and this way you can play around with the tracks so uh, in here uh, or so they're singing in here i can mark a block i can copy the drums the bass or the melody so i can decide to grab the drums this part is now split out and i can use the drums and over here. And having the drums of the incoming track. And of course, in the incoming track, I can also grab the vocal, put the vocal in here, and have a look. And in the effects, I can put some reverb in here. And so it's really fun creating your DJ mix this way. We have a few sample lanes, a voice over lane, and this all. I'm running just like a ray out of time. I'm sorry. I export this to test. But once you are ready, you can export it to local files. Uh, you can export it as a DJ set to record box, including hot cues if you want. Uh, we can export it to Ableton. This is really cool, a video or to Mixcloud. Let me grab the um, mix I made, the Gimme Hot Love. In this mix, I have Hot Stuff. And I have Gimme Gimme. And Gimme Gimme. And Gimme Gimme. You can grab a part of Gimme Gimme and say, copy the vocals. And here's my Gimme Gimme vocal. So this is how easy it is. And looking at the sound transition, I'd like to show you one thing I've got here. A lot of automation lines. I have this given to me. A filter on top of there. And um, I put out a few of those there. You can make really nice transitions. You can export this to Ableton, as I said. We can do a vertical export or a horizontal export. I'd like to show the export that I made, Gimme Gimme. This is the zip file we generate. And here are all the assets. And the cool thing is we create an ALS file for you. And as far as I'm aware, you never saw software creating an ALS file except Ableton itself. So opening this file in Ableton is giving me a result that's looking something like the stems are in here and samples here is my gimme gimme. There is a lot going on. And 
I just want to show you this is in Ableton. This is a this is a lot of this is a lot of tracks, and this is only sample and stems two. There are stems one as well. So just to give you a comparison for a DJ having this on his screen or in Ableton, for Ableton is for producers. This is for DJs doing it the fast lane. I ran out of time. I'm really sorry, but thank you for looking at DJ Studio. We were filling a gap in the market. There is nobody who created a door for DJs. So we play nice with all DJ software out there and we don't compete with anyone. Maybe a little bit with Ableton, but they, they won't notice. So thank you. Wow. One word, wow, amazing. Just simply amazing. Well done, well done, Sebran. We're, we're going to, and, and really guys, I, I need, I need the chat to light up here. Who thought that was a great piece of software? Just put a, a yes in the chat. I mean, Sebron, you need to see the, the reaction here. I, I think it's just phenomenal. There we go. There's a bunch of yeses are going to come in that chat there. I don't know. I was trying to tell you, you should, you should work on curing cancer or something. I mean, hey, and you know if, if people want to know more about DJ studio, or you want to have a one-on-one -on -one intro to DJ studio, we're here to help you. We're here to help you sell DJ studio. So as much time as you want. Okay. Thank you. Now we're going to move to dear reality. Um, let me know if you guys are ready. Are we ready with dear reality? Thank you so much. Seaburn. Hi, my name is Achim. I'm co-founder and sound engineer. I founded Dear Reality around 10 years ago. So Dear Reality, we are from Düsseldorf, Germany, and it's all about spatial audio with us, software and spatial audio. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, since 2014, we are on the market. And what is really amazing, since five years, we are part of the Sennheiser group. So I think... Sennheiser is all known by you, a uh, German audio company since over 75 years, still a family business. And yeah, a company that was into audio innovation all the time and always pushing the boundaries of audio production. And we are so glad that we are now part of Sennheiser and building the future of audio. So quite small team no, it's a core team of development team of around 12 and then of course we have we have our own webshop and a small marketing team some students for our support and also for qa so before i show you our main products let's our ambition as i mentioned the reality is spatial audio and spatial audio it wasn't that popular or that present when we started 10, 10 years ago. So, But our ambition always was to make it accessible for everyone and to let people experience power and the creativity you can have with uh, spatial audio tools. Because I love productions in stereo and I still do, but spatial audio is really something in addition to that. And you also need really creative tools you can rely on and you can work with. So our customers are audio professionals, of course, but besides of this, from the beginning, it was these music creators, sometimes called bedroom producers, people who are really love to do their music production, who are really into music and what they are doing. We also, um, as we are a technology company, because we all our products are based on our own technology, we were or we are into interactive audio, but uh, this is more a B2B business. We have really some fancy tools where you control your door with your VR goggles. But for today, I want to really focus on our plugin portfolio because this is what is available via exchange market. So we have four categories, three main categories, spatializer tools, to, to produce spatial audio, monitoring, better to say virtual monitoring, because these are plugins to mix via headphones in stereo or in multi-channel. And we have reverb. And reverb, we, we have a stereo reverb, including what we know about personal perception and depth uh, um, from our spatializer plugins. 
Then we have this kind of exode, a tone plug-in really to spice up your signals. But yeah, let me give you, or let's start with one of our core products, DFVR Pro 2. It's a spatializer plug-in. And this is a tool that lets you produce spatial audio. And we call it an all-in-one spatializer because it includes different spatial audio formats. You can go binaural, ambisonic, or multi-channel with it. And also, it's a kind of all-in-one uh, product because you can, besides positioning what you see on the right hand now, you, of course, an important part of a spatializer is where you position your audio source in your 360 fields around you. It's about the room virtualization. So we have Included in DVR Pro 2 is a reverb and virtual acoustics. So it's a combination of position, reflection, reverb that makes at the end a real realistic or a real great sounding immersive mix and realistic perception of direction. Also, what's Quite unique with DVR Pro is that we use a patented feature by Sennheiser Ambeo. It's called Clarity. This is for the binaural production. Binaural is a format that where you experience spatial audio via headphones with only two channels, like with our ears. So this binaural is really based on a quite heavy filtering. And this can, of course, or this do sound colorations to your signal. And with music productions, you sometimes don't want that strong colorations. The sound tonality is more important to you than the realistic 3D effect. Let's call it that way. So really interesting and straightforward algorithm to work in immersive audio. Of course, then yeah, you can have head tracking because head tracking where you have a tracker on your headphone is something that's really boost the spatial audio experience. Maybe all of you or some of you know it uh, when using Apple in-ear headphones. To sum it up, how does it look like the plugin? It's uh, for all plugin formats. You use it in your door. You have inputs. Here it's only mono, but of course it can be stereo with DVR Pro. Then you put it on your tracks and you create a multi-channel track and you listen to it via speakers or via headphones using a virtual monitoring tool. And that brings me to our virtual monitoring tool, which is DVR Monitor. We also have a small version of it called DVR Mix. It's only for stereo. It doesn't have these immersive speaker formats. But anyway, also for stereo, you can see virtual monitoring as really an additional third way how to monitor your content. Of course, a, usual, a, a headphone in stereo is good for making edits, for listening to reverb. No doubt. Speakers, I love to listen via speakers. It's, it's great. But now with virtual monitoring, it really it's a different tool that you can use with a simple headphone and a software plugin. So uh, we have also different in, in the reality, we don't capture real world studios. We are not waves with Abbey Roads or which you might have heard. We really create a perfect virtual mid mix room. Of course, perfect is really it's marketing, but we know how a good mix room should sound. And that is why we recreate really a perfect mixing environment with our spatial audio rendering. So we have different types. And the advantage is we could also do an analytic dry room. And this is a room that you will find nowhere else in the world. It's it's, it's no reflections and it's, it's not possible to do this. And it's really great if you want to monitor your mix without an, an additional um, reverb or room characteristic. Really nice for creating an immersive mix. We have different all formats you find in most common doors, Pro Tools or Nuendo. And only two sliders, you can adjust the ambience in this room ABC, not in analytic dry, to your taste. And also you have, again, this patented 
Sennheiser algorithm and clarity where we can reduce coloration or you say, oh no, now it's more needed for me to have an exact localization of, of the signal I'm monitoring. If you monitor via headphones, you need a compensation for your headphone. And this is not, we are not making all the headphones, existing headphones better than they are. It's just, if you use it with a virtual monitor rendering after you have to do a compensation because you have a characteristics of a headphone and this has to be fitted to our rendering. And that's why we created this um, spatial headphone compensation filters. Also really effective for, for using a headphone in immersive audio production. Then we have the reverb, and I also mentioned it's a stereo reverb. So it's really straightforward. We used what we know about spatial perception in a reverb, and it's IR, so impulse response based, but we created, we call it synthesized multi IRs. So we, again, we didn't capture real room environments for these IRs. We, we synthesized them. And then what is really Extraordinary for, for the plucking is this triangle pad where you really easy can move between and adjust levels dry, early, and late. And this fast forward, you find your perfect uh, fitting for your song, for your, for your mix. That's the other parameters are quite straightforward. You know them from other reverbs. So, and our exode, I, I mentioned, it's not really spatial audio, but it's a re-synthesizer. And because it's also, yeah, we we are since one year at Exchange Market. And yeah, it seems that people like this plugin too. So it recreates your audio signal. It detects the zero crossings of the signal and fills in the gap between with something new. So it's a mixture of old and new. And this can go from really subtle spice up to absolutely freak out this distortion and destruction of your signal. Really interesting to, to use if you're in electronic music and just want to change or give the sounds a, a certain a custom yeah, identity, let's say it that way. Yes, we are since... We started as a startup, small. Now we're part of Sennheiser. Still, we really have a strong relation to our customers. So we have reviews on our website and we have really a good support because we are all, also our students do working in, in, in the support and our development teams, we're all into spatial audio and what we're doing. And at uh, it would be amazing if you would love to distribute our tools and let me know if there are more questions to this. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And uh, now we're going to have Music Lab show us some of the new software. Where is our Music Lab, folks? It's Maxime. Good to be here. Good morning, Ray. Good to see you again. My name is... Good to see you. My name is Maxim Alexanian Stetsenkov. I am CTO of Music Lab. We've been developing and selling virtual guitars for the past 20 years. Our team of nine includes professional musicians, sound engineers, and developers. We offer five virtual guitar products, Real Guitar, Real Strat, Real LPC, Real Rig, Real 8 featuring 13 acoustic and 16 electric guitar models and variations. They enable both beginners and professionals to create realistic guitar parts, both keyboardists and sound producers can turn musical ideas into authentic tracks. Here is a short video to give you a general impression on our product line, the level of quality recognized by musicians. Robert, tell 
a little bit about the products, what you think? Real Guitar is amazing. It is amazing. It is like, uh, I, I can't believe the, the results I get. I've done some film and television work, and a lot of times, either live or in the studio when you're writing, you need a real guitar sound, and you don't have access to a guitar player right away. So that's when I'm going to be reaching for your plugin. You know, virtual instruments are often seen as just another sample library, a loop set. However, creating quality, usable, and successful virtual guitars like ours requires much more. Today, I want to highlight our product strengths and show you examples of their use, demonstrating what makes our products the ultimate guitar virtual guitar solution. And we'll have a manage to hide inside a full-fledged musical instrument. There are three main qualities of our product that I want to emphasize today. Powerful simplicity, true guitar modeling, and freedom in realizing musical ideas. Uh, our products make it possible to create both rhythm and melodic guitar parts. For all elements, solos, chord progressions, picking and strumming patterns in various music styles, FX processor settings, our products include libraries and presets created and tuned by professional musicians. Even those without a deep understanding of guitar music can easily build guitar parts using these ready-made elements. And the product includes rhythm library, where is over of a thousand professional rhythm patterns grouped by styles, basic pulses and textures. The chord library offers over a uh, certain type of guitar chords with selectable roots, position, slash bass options, providing 2,000 instant guitar chord shapes, which gives millions of possible resulting pattern combinations. Guitar Fix preset library offers 300 presets carefully crafted following guitar tones used in most popular songs played by greatest uh, guitarists. We constantly expand this library with new presets and additional materials. Let's see how it's done. In this example, a simple guitar riff is created in solo mode and accompanying track is made by selecting chords and rhythm patterns in the built-in mini sequencer. There are a lot of ways to make a sound on an actual guitar. Each of our guitars features multi-sample sounds capturing the full spectrum of articulation. Finger plugs, mutes, palm mutes, bridge mutes, harmonics, various noises from strums, slaps, frets, peaks, body hits, string buzzes. The authentic guitar part requires specific chord construction, proper variability in chord strums, peak position, context-specific use of noises, Implementation of various guitar techniques like slides, hammer-ons, pull-offs, legato, tremolo, trills, bends, and more. The number of possible combinations is tremendous, just can be sampled. We address this problem by creating a custom engine, flexible and powerful, allowing parametric control of every aspect of those techniques and articulation. Engine can be controlled manually or automatically. 
please watch how a simple guitar part comes to life and this true guitar modeling techniques are used. Having sampled and modeled a vast range of capabilities doesn't guarantee intuitive usage. The challenge with guitars is that natural playing techniques often have no direct analogs on a keyboard. As you can imagine, detailed programming in a sequencer or extensive key switch usage can be a showstopper and hinder the creative process. Over the years, we've perfected intuitive playability of our product. See how every aspect of the guitar rich sound possibilities is addressed in our products in an elegant and easily accessible way, both live and in MIDI editor. As you can see, our guitars are full-fledged musical instrument, opening guitar possibilities for non-guitarists. Our products uh, are designed for both beginners assembling tracks from ready-made blocks and for professionals with all the nuances of guitar techniques available at their fingertips intuitively. This is not just another virtual instrument, but a powerful and accessible ultimate virtual guitar solution. For 20 years, we have earned the trust and satisfaction of numerous clients, including world renowned musicians. Despite our success, we believe our products is still a hidden gem with untapped potential. We are immensely grateful to our current customers and dealers for their recognition and support. And we invite you to help us expand our reach by introducing our product to your clients. Together, let's unveil the full beauty of our software, enabling more musicians to benefit from its capabilities and driving mutual success for all. Thank you for your attention. All I can say, this is the best time to be uh, making music. I mean, it's unbelievable. All the tools that we saw today, I mean, wow. If I had this stuff 30 years ago, I might not be here. I might be living in Tahiti or someplace like that. 
All right, I'd like to, first of all, thank you all for attending. I knew we ran over, I, I, I figured this morning we were gonna go for 90 minutes. And I think these types of meetings actually we have to kind of budget for 90 minutes. They're gonna be that long. However, thank you all for attending. Thank you to Seabrand, Him, and Maxime from DJ Studio, Dear Reality, and Music Lab. Thank you for everybody here to put together everything. All right. Thank you, guys. And we'll see you all next month with another exciting exchange reseller meeting. Thank you. Take care. Have a great day. Have a great weekend.